have some other examples? What do you think of this one? Mm. So, mm -hmm. Bobby, why don't you run through the criteria? All right, I'll try. So I think it's spiky, so it's one. Uh, the wavelength, can you switch to average there, Dr. Beniski? Yes. I cheat a little bit. I think it's different. So I'll give another point there to three. I think it's asymmetric, but I'm not sure. So maybe three. Yeah, look, look, look how 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 the downgoing is steeper than the, the yeah. outgoing. Right. Okay. Um, there is a nice after going slow, especially I have 10 T10 down there. And know that the, the, it, it goes hand in hand with, with the, the spiky thing. So spike and slow wave in all the channels. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if it stands out, but we already have, and we, there's a field. I think the voltage map is going to look nice. So at least we have one, four, six and we're done. Yeah, right, right. Let me show you the voltage map. Yeah. Yeah, it looks, looks nice. So. And it stands uh, out. Yeah. yeah. All, all six. All, all that. six. Now, now concerning the, the background uh, activity, the change in the background activity. So you can see that before the spike, there is an in, in, increase in the beta activity. So actually you, you have also the criteria number five. So this, this is an archetype of, of a spike. You, you see it once in a recording, then you can conclude about it. Yeah. Okay, what do you think about this guy here? Hmm. I think it's spiky, hmm. there's one. Can we switch montages again? There's a nice after going slow wave there. That, that'll give a point for sure. Well, no, no. <laughs> so actually, I think uh, if you look at C3, mm -hmm. it, that slow wave shows up there also, but not the spike. So it's uh, probably not even a part of the same event. And also the other way around. So look at F7, you have the spike, but you don't have that slow wave. So they, they don't yeah. go hand, hand in hand. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. Well, let and me show the, you the voltage map. Looks like it's from the brain. Brain, one point. Yeah, it, indeed, it's it's probably not not the, the, the nicest one, but it's it's it, it looks reasonable. So yeah, um, yeah. Let me let me tell you what what the experts rating this um, uh, told. So they, they also mm -hmm. told that this this has number one. I mean, it's spiky. Mm -hmm. uh, not the majority. Some said that that uh, number two. So the different wavelengths is is also there. I, I would agree with you guys. I would not call these wavelengths different than than this. It's it's just a pop up of the beta activity here. Mm -hmm. And then um, again, this is not the nicest voltage map, but it's still acceptable. So at most three, at most three. Yeah. So no, unless you see a lot of them on the recording, right? Exactly. Exactly. So at, at least five five times. But again, most of most of the raters only agreed on, on number one. So so raters uh, did not reach a majority, neither on two or on six. This this is a uh, normal sharp transient. But yeah. this time it's it's a pop up, not not in the theta or the alpha frequency domain, but it's in the beta. The beta. Mm -hmm. okay. Let's see another. Oh, there you go. This is a little bit more noisy, but that's yeah. real, real word, real life. This one. Yeah, this is is spiky. Number one, mm -hmm. it uh, I think it's its duration is different from anything else in the background. Mm -hmm. So two, asymmetry. I think it's to me it looks well. It depends on how you measure it, but I think it's uh, slope is more is steeper going up maybe, but I'm not confident about that. Mm. Yeah, that that's um, always a matter of discussion. Yeah, with yeah. Asymmetry. yeah. So and then it has a slow wave. I think. Well, let's see. Is it right after? uh no. i think so but it, it looks like it has a little bit of oscillation in the background right yeah but but the background is very noisy so background is noisy. To... yeah so i'm going to give it a yes for and that here's your voltage map and and a yes for that then okay. yep okay so Let's... this is this is again a very very nice example so yes mm. indeed, indeed. Now, why did your uh friends your 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 experts say no to number five I don't know. I don't know because um, yeah, I, I I also think that that it's it's uh, it's uh, disrupted, but uh, this this did not uh, reach majority. So I, see. I, I think I think it did not even reach two experts because otherwise it would be in parentheses. Sandra, for criterion five, um, you know, do do you take the slow wave into account? Because of course here that would be you know something not present in the background other places, or do you kind of discount that? No, we discount that because that's a criterion uh, of its own. So okay. the the disturbance of the background it's it's rarely, but it can be also before the spike. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or more typically, when you don't see a um, slow wave after the spike or sharp wave, then, then you see a flattening, uh, very high frequency, low amplitude activity after the spike. So basically a flattening of, of the EEG trace after the spike instead of, of the slow wave. That's, that's the typical. But if, if you train your eyes, you can, you can spot it also uh, in front of the spikes sometimes. How about this guy here? Mm, looks like an artifact to me. So let's go through the criteria. Fabio, you want to try? Yeah. So spiky, one point. Um, the wavelength, I guess it's different. It gets 1.2. Yeah, look at what's before and after it. So yeah. Okay, maybe. 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 Um, not asymmetric, pretty symmetric. So no point. No, no after going to the wave. Uh, probably the voltage map is not going to look from brain. No, this is the voltage map. So yeah. how is it? Not from the brain. No, no. Very irregular. So this is this is not not from not from the brain. Yeah, and not from the brain. So, so when this this is an art a spiky artifact. Now, what about criteria five? Did we talk about that one? You can see some beta before. You can see beta after. Uh -huh. no. Yeah, I, they agree with me though. Though for number two. The yeah, they, they agreed with you about about number two. I, I'm I'm not sure I, I would have agreed because, because <laughs> actually this is in the same frequency domain as, as what what you see in the background before yeah. and after. But but yeah, mo most of our seven experts agreed with you. Dude. And I was not one of them. That's a disclaimer. Sendor, <laughs> <laughs> can you go to the voltage voltage map really quickly? Can yeah. you just explain why, like, what are you looking at and why do you know that's so, not coming from the brain? So look, look how irregular this is. So this is neither a, a radial voltage map nor a tangential or an oblique voltage map. It, mm -hmm. It's very irregular. So you, you, can, you cannot estimate the source from, from the brain. Now, this is opposed to, let's go quickly back to this one. Mm -hmm. I mean, look how beautiful it is. This makes sense. This, this is the neuronal rocket propelled grenade firing is in this direction. Turn which is not the case here. Got so it. This, this would be a, a, a very weak firing of a rocket. It wouldn't even make it out of the brain. Or, or yeah, or many, many, many small RPGs firing here and there. Or <laughs> but it, it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense from a physiological. And can we go back to the, the EEG sender and, and, yes. and understand why there's no feel to it? Just look at the EEG, not the voltage map. Now this this is uh, this is probably a mu muscle artifact. So th their distribution on the voltage is is completely different than than if it had been generated from the brain. So remember that that there is some smearing be because of the skull, and that's why you, you have these uh, very nice uh, voltage distributions if the source is from from the brain, which is not the case here because the source is actually outside the skull. Got it. So what do you think about this one, hmm. Randy? You want to go now? I mean, it's, it is spiky um, and again, always with number two, or sorry, wave duration. I think the wave duration is different. Um, yeah. The asymmetry, I really think it's not asymmetric, but I, I'm never confident about that. Look, look, at, look at it now in a common average. Yeah, I mean, again, so I, I think if I measured the slope, it would be about the same, it, it, you know, obviously the downgoing uh, segment is longer, so maybe that makes it look a little steeper. Right, but uh, I'm not How confident the, about that one. The criterion four, then the the following slow wave. I, I it has one. Yes, yeah. a nice one. Yeah, it has a nice. Perhaps one. want to to talk about the the disturbance. Oh yeah, num background. number five. Yeah, I just wanted to look at number five. I I, t I don't think it's really disrupted here, honestly. No. Yeah. You, you could argue there is some beta at the end of the slow wave, but you can see that the same. I think it's also. present elsewhere too. Yeah. So, so five is no. I wouldn't think either. And six is and, probably and yes. Six is a nice one. Yeah. yeah. So, so again, um, as as you were in doubt about the uh, the symmetry, other uh, users were also or raters were also in doubt about about the asymmetry. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, you have uh, you have really, really nice examples. Yeah. So. I hope you, you you really like this criteria, but but you're expert, so I, I don't know how much it, it adds to your your in, intuitive feeling. But I can tell you that it's really useful for young trainees because they can learn it. So we looked at yeah. this in a systematic way with seven young trainees, and you can see that 
before they got the training in the IFCN criteria, their sensitivity was just 60%, and then it significantly uh, increased uh, close to 80%. And more importantly, their specificity was really low, so 77%. And then it, it approached uh, 95% our goal after the, the training. But mm -hmm. this is compared to the gold standard. Now, what is independent from the gold standard is, is their inter-rater agreement. And you see how, how much they disagreed before. Mm -hmm. uh, so their inter-rater agreement was uh, only 0 0.3, mm -hmm. uh, only fair. And then it, it significantly increased to a high moderate to 0 0.56 after they got the training. And then- um, as, Oh, wow, this looks we, like a good paper. <laughs> just published this, this manifesto about, about the importance of increasing the inter-rater agreement in EEG. And then here's the famous rub curve from experts. And then of course, you have the influence of the noise. And then uh, we argue that if we implement some criteria, then we drag this rock curve to this ideal upper left corner. And then on this rock curve, the experts could switch the level, the threshold of the detection. And that's exactly what we can see if we implement the IFCN criteria. So you can see these are individual rock curves from individual experts. So you can see they are very close to each other. So they are pulled together to, towards this left upper corner. And then these are these dots on the rock curves are the number of criteria that they had to consider in order to call a, a discharge epilepsy form. And you can see that just by varying the number of criteria that uh, must be fulfilled, uh, they, they can go up and down on this rock yeah. curve. So we can we can deal both with the noise and with the level using the IFCN criteria. Yeah. Actually, just one one uh, really nice thing about this. So as you know, you and I have some philosophical differences about the the right approach, but I think one big strength of, of, of your approach here and the IFC EIN criterion is that, um, so, you know, and unlike what we normally would do if you have a lot of years where you just sort of make one decision, mm -hmm. here you make six, you know, independent small decisions, none of which is, you know, binding <laughs> essentially. Right. And then we just compute the answer from that. So that, that really is a recipe for helping people agree more. And, and I'm telling you, it's also easier to teach this than, yeah. than as the subjective feeling. That is it. for sure. Yeah, that's true. And just back to the manifesto there, Sandor, uh, just shout out to Dr. Jing Jing, who's behind all this, the spike right. genius. And uh, yeah, she's created with along with Brandon, all the uh, spike tests and all. And last, last question, just to wrap it up, um, as experts, as you both, do you actually use the IFC criteria when you're reading in practice or just in tough cases, systematically? How do you guys go about this? After some experience, uh, you, you just call it a spike or, or a sharp wave, but you always always come come across some difficult cases where you think, hmm, is this a spike or a sharp wave? And then you you can you can reach out for this uh, IFCN criteria. You know the the other scenario where this is useful is is when you discuss an EEG in a in a multidisciplinary team meeting. And you know when you get there are lots of experts, then then there are lots of opinions. And you know we reach out for for some objective principle. I prefer the dictatorship model. So I'm just right. <laughs> No, no, but I, I, I think I agree largely with Sandor. I mean, um, so I find these, these criteria very useful when talking with trainees and with colleagues, as, especially in cases. So for most cases, this works well, and it's a way to explain your reasons. For the most part, I, I find these really helpful for communication and teaching. All right. Awesome. So, Good wrap. Thanks. I